Earplugs ready. I've got the ISB in one ear, so I've got the earplug ready. Now, Scott, you were in Atlanta when the Omni was imploded, the uh, basketball stadium there, mm -hmm. and you were pretty close to that, so you kind of know what to expect. This is my first implosion, and probably the first for many people in Seattle. Actually, we were probably a little closer to the uh, Omni implosion, done by the same firm as doing this implosion, and you know, it really was it was over so quick. It was a big boom. It kind of startled everybody, and then it slowly collapsed, and then it was done, and we were all kind of going, hmm. And it just it? it just took seconds. It just took seconds. And then there was a big dust cloud, and then the dust cloud hit, and everyone started choking. So I see gas masks or uh, filters over people, here. That people, people are getting have. their so filters ready, getting ready. covering their cameras. A lot of expensive equipment out here, and of course we can hear the radio. You can hear that uh, that that demolition radio getting yeah, the CDI ready. To, radio. That's right, ready to inform us if there are going to be any delays. Uh, but right now everything is on though, schedule, like and we're getting camper? ready for the dome. Yeah. To go boss. Yeah, let's take one last look inside the dome. Can we go to our inside cams? We're getting announcements here. As you can hear, things are starting to come down, wind down here. Right, can we go inside the dome, guys, and take a look? We have four different cameras on and inside the dome. And as this thing comes tumbling down, the cameras are going down with it, and you're going to see it live here on Q13 from inside and outside. We've got it covered from so many different angles that uh, you can spend your whole day looking at it. And of course, we'll show you the replays afterwards, but this is the, lo the last live look inside Seattle's kingdom. And it is one minute and a half until this thing goes down. Let's give you some of the numbers here. They drilled 6,000 holes in here, and we've got uh, almost eight acres of roof that is going to come tumbling down in a little bit, 100,000 feet of detonation cord. The whole thing's going to take 20 seconds, 12 seconds of boom, let's say. And yeah. Different implosions. Right. You know, you're going to have the first first three sections are going to collapse. Then a little while later, three more sections are going to collapse, and the top of the roof is actually going to pull the sides down with it. So okay. they're going to use gravity to bring it down. They've just given us the one minute mark now, Scott. Of course, you know, 130,000 tons of material made up the dome. 80,000 tons were recycled on site or hauled away before today's implosion, and the remnants, the 50,000 tons, the shell of the dome, which is still standing for one more minute, most of which is called concrete. Thirty-five percent of that will be used on-site as backfill for the new stadium and the rest will be sold as recyclable materials. So, all right, the tension is building. It certainly is for me. I'm a little bit nervous. Thirty seconds to the big boom. I'm also, you're going to be able to get a piece here. of the dome later on. They'll be giving out free, uh, free slices of the dome so you can get your own little souvenir. All right, we're going to take a, a we're going to step aside here so you can get a, a, a good view of what's going to happen. All right, we are coming down yeah, to the end here. of the kingdom as we know it. All right. Ten seconds. Now, Scott, will we feel the blast here? Yeah, we will. Carl, are you clear? Clear. Devin, are you clear? Clear. Jack, are you clear? Clear. Jamie, are you clear? Clear. Jesse, are you clear? Doug, are you clear? Clear. Jason, are you clear? Clear. Kevin, are you clear? Clear. Jamie, are you clear? Clear. Will, are you clear? Clear. Cass, are you clear? Clear. Stacy, are you clear? Clear. Mark, are you clear? Clear. This is your one minute siren, CDI. This is your one minute siren. Okay, as you one can hear, it, it, we're now one minute to the implosion. And we're here live at Safeco Field watching this. And, and, and we're Scott, <laughs> everybody is silent up here, just waiting for the moment. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of reverence here as the moment approaches, and, and maybe a little apprehension, too. Uh, Stacey, warm up not the what exactly is going to happen. You're in the red. And as you can see on top of the dome, I don't. The, the ribs that you see on top of the dome are going to be blown up, so it's going to crumple in, in red, and pull the walls down. And I don't know if you can see the helicopters. There must be, what, 30 well, helicopters? Hear them. There's several helicopters, and of course the boats out on Elliott Bay. It's just incredible. Beautiful view here today. Less than 30 seconds. Buzzing like gnats, Leslie. Relax. Easy for you to say. <laughs> People at home can feel my nervousness. Here sure we go, CDI. The funny thing is, everyone's sort of leaning back eight, away, right? Seven, six, five. Fire.
<laughs> we have made it. The dust cloud is coming our way. It's moving our way. Oh my God. Coming. Oh my. An historical day in Seattle. Absolutely. The dome has tumbled down, and you can hear the cheers from the street. That was the most amazing thing I have seen. That was incredible. And heard. <laughs> and heard. It was loud, but I have to tell you, I had my ear plug in one ear, my ISD in the other, and it was loud, but you could feel the, the floor here, the, the cement here at Safeco Field shake when, when the dome was imploded. And did you, you feel it shake? Absolutely. You could feel the, you could feel the energy from the blast hit mm -hmm. you in the face as well. That was amazing to watch all the charges go off. It was also amazing to see the expression of the other media. There's probably about 150 media, of course, from Seattle and, and national media here watching the implosion and videotaping it here today. And you'll see the replays over and over and over again. Hey, but the sentiment here, everybody was silent, just waiting for the moment. Yeah, the question is, is what was it like? over in Party Central where, you know, they're a little bit yeah. farther away. What's it like over there, Sam and Christine? Oh, oh I gotta tell you what, guys. I mean, we felt the same thing, probably not as forceful as you did up here, but let's just show you the dust Take right now. Shot because we'll the just dust step back. It's all over the city. You can see it right now just looming over Seattle, the dust going everywhere. It's actually blowing away from where you're standing. Yeah, you guys are lucky. Safeco Field. <laughs> yeah, because it's heading downtown. It is it moving was... north toward, it's actually, in, it's also surrounding Smith Tower right now. We were seeing Smith Tower just a second ago. Right. It's gone. It's making its way to the Columbia Tower right now. Most of downtown on the south end is completely engulfed in dust right now. Really, it's an amazing sight. It, it is all blowing in that direction. And uh, Scott and Leslie, that's the, the picture here from Amazon.com. I can tell you right here, Party Central got a little bit of a boom, and now it's really going. People here just jumping all oh, over yeah. the place. Oh, yeah, and the band stopped playing, and everybody looked like this. But they're firing up. Yeah, they're all like, what's yeah. that? Yeah, no, it was, it was tremendous. It was an unbelievable sight right. up here. It was like New Year's. Five, four, three, yeah, two, one, right, everybody right, else. Right. <laughs> Back to you guys. Okay, thanks very much, Sam and Christine. We'll check in with you a little bit later. Now the real party begins, okay? I'm relaxed now. The dome has been imploded. We're still standing. Safeco Field is here. And uh, let's take a look at that dome implosion from our vantage point. Yeah, we're going to have replays all day long. Here comes your first replay. This is what we saw from right here at Safeco Field, mm -hmm. and you saw if you were with us. People at home can feel my nervousness. Here we go. The funny thing is everyone's sort of nine, leaning back eight, away right now. Seven, six, Fire. And I'll tell you, there were some astonished faces when that blew, especially right where we were, which is right on top of the kingdom. And you can see the dust cloud is coming our way. Yeah, it's going to take a while for that to settle in. And as we mentioned, um, Crews will immediately okay, enter the streets to here. start cleaning up the dome and uh, cleaning up the, the remnants of the dome and, and all of the dust. And We've of course, the, the, the dust here, is, the is still crews. settling. Yeah, it's, we're, we're just watching this cloud ominously as it makes our way or makes its way over here. Okay, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the Columbia Tower now. You can probably see that live. There's the Columbia Tower being lost in that big dust cloud. And this That's thing an could travel year. anywhere from a half a mile to a mile, they said, depending on how the wind blows. But uh, right now, the wind is not blowing that hard. And it's and not blowing in our direction. Absolutely not. Now, we're going to take a look at some of our Inside the Dome replays. We have got those for you. These are going to be incredible. So let's uh, roll those. We're going to let, um, let the sound speak for itself here. Okay, and you were looking at the live pictures from inside the dome. We do not have audio on that. But, but it gives um, you an idea of what, what the actual implosion looked like. And, of course, it happened in two phases. Mm -hmm. And, uh, y you know, when we were standing here listening to the implosion, you hear the big boom, and then you hear the cheers on the street from street level. And we're up pretty high here at Safeco Field. But our Julie Lee is down at street level. And uh, let's get some reaction from Julie and from the people on the street. Well, hey, Leslie and Scott. Um, they told us not to wear black. I wore black today. And uh, it's, it's a little dusty out here. Take a look to where the kingdom used to be. You can barely see it. A lot of dust out here. Some people have thrown some handkerchiefs over their faces. They've got blankets covering themselves up. What do you think? Awesome. Totally awesome. Too cool? Yeah, too cool. <laughs> are you glad you were here? Yeah, yeah, something. What are you, you going to do when you go home and, and tell people? How, how would you describe it? Well, it's kind of heart-stopping. 
really was. It's just like, wow. It's just it was awesome. camera. Very cool. Now, these folks, um, you met them a little bit earlier. They came all the way down. They spent the night down here. They brought all the kids. Was it worth it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. It was neat. It was cool. Goosebumps were standing strong. The power and the vibrations are just something else. An absolutely spectacular sight out here. We are getting dusted, and, and a lot of the crowd has dispersed because of all that dust, but really, really amazing this morning. Scott and Leslie, back to you guys. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Julie. Yeah, we see this uh, dust cloud coming in from behind us, but now we're going to go take a kind of unique look at the implosion. <laughs> we're going to play with technology It's the here. reverse implosion. We're just going to uh, show you the kingdom as it goes back together, just because, what the heck? Why because not? it's a party. <laughs> it's a party. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and we're we having can. fun, and we got technology. <laughs> so let's show this thing. This is the implosion in reverse. Here we go. The dome, put it back together. If you miss the dome, here it comes. It's coming back. And um, <laughs> we told you we would have unique perspectives, and we have them here in Q13. That's right. We've got the party perspective. We've got the boat perspective. We've got the Columbia Tower perspective. We've got the Scott and Leslie perspective. We've got the inside perspective. And it's all going to play again tonight at 11 o'clock, just in case you want to see it again. And, of course, we'll have some, uh, some reaction on Q13 reports at 10. Absolutely. And now we have another replay. And can we roll that, fellas? We're just going to keep doing this so you can see this incredible, You're going to see this over and over explosion again. again and again. And I'll, and I'll tell you, you know, you said, uh, we were talking about how I was at the Omni. I saw the Omni come down. It was nothing compared to this. Absolutely nothing. This is the enormity of this dwarfed the Omni. I think what's incredible is all the buildup. And, and of course, they've been taking down the dome for a year now. And, mm -hmm. and what was left was, was basically a shell of the kingdom. But uh, the whole thing happened in, in less than 20 seconds. It was just incredible. All right, we have a live spectator shot now uh, to go to and, and give you once again a different perspective of what just happened a few moments ago. <laughs> this is obviously one of those uh, private parties that we were talking about that uh, not everybody had the opportunity to go to, but a lot of people watching from street level, of course, they've, they've cordoned off the area and there's, there, you can't get within a thousand feet of the implosion and, and the dust is carrying. But fortunately, it's not moving in our direction. So. Yeah, we're, we're lucky so far in that the dust cloud seems to be settling and uh, has not made it over to us. And like I said, when I was in Atlanta for that last one, it landed right on top of us. Mm -hmm. and people were coughing, and, and people here have masks, and they're ready. But I don't think we're going to need them right yeah. now. Well, I think this is you know, certainly turning into a bit of a celebration, because as we said at the top of our show, this is making way for a brand new era for the Seattle Seahawks. A brand new stadium will, will be in right where the kingdom stood, and it will be open for, uh, for the, the season in, in 2002, and, and that should be exciting. And, uh, you know, love this building or hate it, it's, it's gone now, but a lot of memories were made, and it's certainly been uh, the topic of conversation weeks leading up to the implosion, and uh, people will be talking about this for years to come, I'm sure. And you can now start to see the rubble now that the dust is clearing. You can see what's left. They said there would be columns up to 60 feet high. It doesn't look like uh, anything that high withstood the blast. Um, it now, seems well, like it was a picture-perfect explosion. We're starting to get a, a, a better view from our vantage point, anyway, of the rubble that's left. The, the, the dust cloud is moving in the other direction, so we're, we just see a big pile of rubble right there. Yeah, everything looks like it went according to plan. They said things could be 60 feet high out on the ends and uh, 25 feet of pile of rubble right in the middle where that big ring came down. And uh, it looks and appears like everything went as planned. And so that's good news as well. And um, we're going to take a look at another replay of the implosion. There you go. This is ju from just outside of the kingdom. And, you know, Scott, we were talking earlier about how loud it would be, and, and I really, you know, didn't know what to expect. But one of the uh, the things about the Kingdom, and, and, you know, some people complained, I guess, you know, it, it worked to the Seahawks' advantage in the 80s, was the, the loudness of inside the Dome. When the fans got in there and they were cheering, you know, the sound could go up to 120 decibels, which was just incredible, and worked to their advantage at times. And uh, <laughs> someone was telling me yesterday that they referred to the fans as the 12th man when the Seahawks were playing those. Absolutely, and for the Mariners as well. I remember playoff games, watching. 
watching him. It just, yeah, on TV, you could just feel the noise because yeah. it was so loud. It would just reverberate in that big concrete shell. It certainly made a better stadium for football than for baseball. You know, we've got Safeco Field now with the roof that opens and you can feel like you're outside. Well, you are outside when you're watching uh, the Mariners play. Of course, weather permitting, if it's raining in Seattle, then uh, we'll close the roof. But let's take a look at another replay now of the uh, dome implosion. You can hear the crowds. We were talking about the uh, the noise from the streets, and you can hear that. Absolutely. Cheering. Yeah, well, we had them down here, and they all started doing the countdown. Everyone went silent except for the crowds who picked up the countdown, and they counted us down to zero. And uh, there she blows. The kingdom. And here it goes again. Just an incredible, incredible sight, especially from our perspective right here. And uh, uh, wow. That was the most amazing thing I think I have seen as it comes down. That was incredible. Well, many Seattleites have thought that the King Dome is an unattractive building, or was an unattractive building, but it certainly has fulfilled its purpose. And whether you love it or hate it, the implosion of the King Dome is Seattle history in the making. And we saw that here live on Q13 today. And we're going to put back the King Dome, put it Absolutely. back together again, take it down, put it up. That's what we do. We this can play with it. This is called the reverse implosion <laughs> because it's a party. It is a party, and a we can reverse party. implode it if we want to. We're going to do it. Let's let's, uh, let's rewind that thing and put the kingdom all back together again, so you can savor it there for one go. last moment. I think we just saw it. And um, we well, you know a quote uh, a quote from Hall of Famer Steve Largent. They can destroy the building, but they can never damage the relationship between the players and the fans. And I think that just about sums it up. There's there's a lot of fan support for the Mariners, for the Seahawks here in uh, in Seattle, and a lot of excitement to look forward to when the new stadium. Uh, and the new stadium, you know, is going to be ready in 2002. It'll seat 67,000. Most of the seats will be covered. Mm -hmm. So even though it won't be a dome stadium, you're still going to have covered seats for almost all of the seats. And uh, we're going to take a look at another replay while we chat away here about the new stadium. 7,000 club seats in the new stadium, which of course has yet to be named, and uh, 71 upper levels. I'm thinking maybe the, the Miller Dome. What do you think? Well, it really wouldn't be a dome. The Miller Stadium. big football fan, sure. <laughs> happy with that. <laughs> Miller's a big football fan. She's a big absolutely, hockey fan. Absolutely. And uh, just to recap the, the size of this thing, this is the biggest concrete dome in the world and is now not here anymore. 660 feet, almost eight acres in size. I mean, just an incredible structure to bring down. And, uh, what a day. For $67 million, and of course it's open. The doors open on March 27, 1976. Almost 24 years to the day. All right, little Q&A, Leslie Miller. What's the first sports team to play inside the dome? The first sport was soccer, and it was the Seattle... Sounders. Sounders, the Seattle Sounders, and they right. played New York. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, stay with us here. We have got much more coming up. We're going to check in with all our people on the street as well as see about 40 more replays of this implosion. And, and we're going to talk to the UW seismologists as well. Absolutely. So stay with us. We'll be right back for the big party. <laughs> Buy Factory Direct. The jewelry exchange in Renton has a complete factory in full view and guarantees all our jewelry to be the lowest price. Compare Tiffany's one carat invisible bands for over $5,000 with the jewelry exchange's GVS quality for $1,600. One carat pendants are $249, two carat tennis bracelets are $349, and one carat studs $399. We carry thousands of rings, bracelets, and pendants. Our prices are so low we guarantee all our jewelry to appraise for at least double. The Jewelry Exchange in Renton.